Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about contracted pricing in Revenue Cloud. Contracted pricing operates on a couple different objects, so first one being contracts. Then your flat contracted price is held on the contract item price object. And you can also have discount uh, schedules and tiers through the price adjustment schedule and price adjustment tiers object. The contracted pricing can be created either manually or automatically. So manually, uh, we're going to go through, create a contract, create your contract item price records and adjustment schedules and tiers as necessary. And auto creation can happen using the new contract button on the quote object, which launches a flow. You've got a template in your revenue cloud environment by default that you can customize. And that flow will give you a couple different options for contract uh, item price creation. The contract flow needs to be set under revenue setting and set up flow for creating contracts from quotes. And as usual, after creation or uh, update of contract item prices or adjustment schedules, you need to make sure you refresh your decision tables for accurate pricing on your quotes. All right, let's head into Salesforce. All right, so let's first look at the scenario where you create your contract pricing manually. So from the contracts objects, you're going to create a new contract, you can use whatever record type you want. So we'll simply use the CLM record type by default for now on your contract. Obviously, you want to set your account, the contract start date. So when is that effective from? So let's set this at the beginning of the month. You can define a term or leave it blank if you want to define how long that contract is going to be valid for. So let's set this to 12 months. Status initially will be set to draft. You can define which price book this is going to apply to and any other fields that are required on there. We can leave the rest as is for now. Let's hit save. Now that you've got your contract created, what we now want to look at is the contract item price related object. So if I go in and create a new contract item price record, I can select the discounting to apply either to full entire category of product or a specific product. So let's select a specific product and we'll add our uh, Tesla model tree. Standard price for the one time product selling model is 40,000. So what we'll do is so you could also set uh, the contract pricing as a discount percentage or amount. Now we want to set a predefined price. So let's add into the price field. Let's set this to 30,000. And the start date we will set to November 1st as uh, our contract starts on November 1st. So that's the contract item price record. You can also, as I said, create adjustment schedules and tiers. So if we want to create volume discounting for this, what we can do is create first our price adjustment schedule. Effective from is also going to be on November 1st. Effective to can be a year down to uh, the end of uh, October in 2025. Schedule type is going to be volume. Adjustment method will leave to range and price book again will set to standard price book. And what we can do next is within your schedule, you want to create a couple different tiers, as many as required, right? So create your first tier, which is going to be let's do percentage based, and then we'll do we'll make sure you relate it to your adjustment schedule, lower bound, let's set the 10. And let's say that you get a 5% discount above 10, up to 20 in the upper bound effective from is again, going to be November 1st, the product will select same product we have on our contract item price and one time for the product selling model. All right. <clears throat> Once you've created your first price adjustment tier, you can create additional ones as required, right? So I've got now from 10 to 20 for a 5% discount. So if we need to create one more, we can go back to our price adjustment schedule, create a final tier. Let's select again our price adjustment schedule. We'll do again a percentage discount. Let's set this to 7.5. Lower bound is now going to be 21, no upper bound. So anything 21 and above gets the same discount. Make sure your effective from and to matches what you've got uh, at the header level as well. Again, we'll select our product and product selling model. You can hit save. And now your price adjustment schedule and tiers are created. So you've manually created the contract, contract item price and adjustment schedule. What remains now is that contract needs to be activated and the decision tables need to be refreshed. So once you, my bad, you also need to make sure you also activate your price adjustment schedule before you can activate your contract. So activate the price adjustment schedule, then go back to your contract 
and you can now activate it. Once the contract is active, you can now create quotes from there. But as with other price related actions in Revenue Cloud, you want to make sure you refresh your decision table. So the decision tables that you need to refresh at this point are contract pricing entries and um, price adjustment tiers as well, which is right there. Tiered adjustment entries need to also be refreshed. So what I've done here is if we refresh this, <clears throat> those should be coming up to the top. So what I've set up is a flow where on contract update, if the contract is set to status equals activated, I have two price actions. One's that, one that is going to refresh the contract price decision table. So you always have that Apex action available in flows where you can define specific decision table API name, and that's going to trigger the refresh. You can also set the, the refresh to be incremental. You consume less of the available refreshes that you've got within an hour. So in this case, I set it to incremental equals true. And I still did the same thing for the price adjustment tiers. So again, identify your the API name from your decision table. So back to our decision table, if you click through on one of those. So let's go to the contract pricing entries. And you want to grab the API name from here and make sure that that's what gets triggered. Now, now that that uh, flow has been triggered because I activated my contract, let's simply give this a minute and we'll come back when the tables are refreshed. Once your tables are refreshed, then you can go back to your contract, as I said, and then you want to create your quote from the contract itself. So you do have that relationship from the quote to the contract. You can give your quote name. So let's call this contract price testing. Let's assign it to the same account we've got on our contract. Define whatever fields you need to define on your quote. And then we want to add our product on this quote so we can select a test that the pricing is working as expected. So from our Tesla catalog, we'll go in, select our model tree, add it on there. So as we can see, the standard price is 41999. We're going to add this to the quote, hit save. And as this pulls through, now you can see that the net unit price without any discount is now 30,000. So if we hover over uh, the net unit price, we'll see the price waterfall. And we can see that the price book entry is coming through at 41,999. But the list price is now sourced from the contract at 30,000. So that's the price that we get now for our product. We also set up adjustment tiers. So if we change our quantity there to 15 and it's save. And once the quote recalculates, you now see that you've got the list price and then the tier discount based on the quantity that was added to your price adjustment schedule. All right, so that's the first method to create contract item pricing, creating it manually. Your other option is going to be to create it automatically from your quote. So from a quote, so you want to create first a new quote. So we'll go again with our same uh, quote and the same account. So we'll use uh, contract automation as the name, then we'll set the account to arts again. Contract is blank for now. Well, it's save add products to our quote. Again, let's use the same products. We'll back in our Tesla catalog. We'll add our model tree. Let's add item to quote. And it's save. And what we'll do now is we'll add a discount manually to our product, let's say 25%. Let's it save. And now this is the pricing that we want to be contracted against, right? based on uh, this new price. 25% is the discount that you want to create on as the contract item price going forward for this customer. So you've got a couple different options in the menu up top, right? So you have new contract and create contracts, two buttons that are available within Revenue Cloud. If you use create contract, that's the CLM action, which is going to create a contract and sales contract lines for contract lifecycle management, right? So if I go through and at this, what I get now is a new contract, no contract item pricing, but I do get a sales contract line. So that's what you would use for redlining and contract lifecycle management. Now that's not what we want. So let's add back to uh, our quote. And from our quote, the action that you want to select is the new contract action. New contract action is going to trigger a uh, screen flow where you can select a couple different options, right? So what do you want to contract from quote? Is it the net unit price? Is it the discount level that you want to create? Or do you simply want to create a contract without any pricing or discount? So what we'll test for now is 
net unit price and it create confirms that you're going to create a contract with contract pricing for one product let's hit create and we're all right there we go the contract is created so if we click through on our contract now again our contract is created with the start date of our quote for the account and now we have the contract item price identified here at 31 499.25, which is what we add on our quote. <clears throat> so now that's a new contract item price for this customer from this contract. So the creation for, for that contract item price is happening through a standard flow that's available in your revenue cloud environment. So if you head over to flows and you go to create contract from quote, so that's the template that comes along with your environment. Obviously, you can be it could be custom customized or, you know, move over from a screen flow to a standard record triggered flow if you wanted this to auto create. But you can see the actions that are taken and you can modify that flow as required if you needed that to be modified. And now back to our quote. So the other thing that's going to be helpful once you've got a contract created this way is if we go back to our contract for a second, set this to activated and save. If you have an activated contract created before you create your order against your quote, so if we're back on our quote now and we hit create order, the order is going to get created. So typically the assets in Revenue Cloud get created and you can see them from the account. And you, that's where you would take your actions for amendments and renewals. If you get your contract created and activated before you get to your uh, order, now the contract is also tagged on your order record that got auto created. And now if I activate this and activating the contract first is a prerequisite if you have that lookup filled in. So now that I've got my order created, the assets are created against the account, but they're also created against our contract. So if we add back to our contract under the assets tab, now we see the model tree that got sold through that, uh, through that contract is also created as a managed assets on, uh, under the account, but also related to our contract. So if you had multiple subscriptions and you want to make sure that they are all related to that one contract, this is how you would get there. So this is how you can create contract pricing in Revenue Cloud. I hope this was helpful. Please take a moment to subscribe if you like the content and please reach out if you've got any questions. Have a good day.